Lou Wasserman is not a name as well known as Louis B. Mayer or Jack Warner, but was probably the most important figure in how the movies developed and changed. Things he did were remarkable in, in terms of what MCA Universal was and became. He had this reputation of being bigger than man. He changed the way the movie business operated. I was fortunate, I was always ahead of the pack. Lou Wasserman was born in Cleveland in 1913, very poor. He eventually drifted toward a very interesting man in Chicago named Jules Stein, who formed a company called MCA, Music Corporation of America, which was booking dance bands out of Chicago. And eventually, Lou Wasserman impressed Jules Stein. MCA decided to hire him. Initially, he becomes an agent for musicians, and he does so well that Jules Stein asks him to move to Los Angeles in 1936, and he becomes the leading agent, and he signs up some of the biggest stars in Hollywood. And by 1946, he becomes the president of uh, MCA. But for the most part, agents didn't play a big role in Hollywood because the studios ran everything. Stars, the directors, the writers, they're all in a contract. But that began to change after World War II. The big moment comes in 1950. Lou Wasserman negotiates a precedent-setting deal for Jimmy Stewart to appear in Winchester 73. And so Jimmy Stewart becomes the first movie star to get points. He takes a lower salary in exchange for a percentage of the gross business a movie does. Well, once Wasserman is able to negotiate that, all the other stars want that. That was the sledgehammer that really began to knock the, door, the walls down at the studios. Stars could now have the ascendancy. Also what Wasserman did for stars like Jimmy Stewart, he made them their own corporations. So he's turning these stars into their own little companies. And some of them became independent producers as well, produced their own movies. So Wasserman really changed everything from an industry that had been run by a few powerful studios that controlled everything an actor did to a talent-driven industry where it's the big stars who have a huge amount of say and a huge share of the profits. But Lou's a very ambitious man. That's not enough. And in 1952, he gets involved in production. Lou is a, a, a visionary in, in a lot of respects. He foresaw the rise of television. All the studios were kind of panicked by television and its impact on theatrical attendance. He knew that, wow, this will be a new market for movies. And so he went out and he bought the Paramount Pre-48 library. And that became a tremendous cash generator to this day. Well, who would have thought that that entire Paramount library would end up making so much money on VHS tapes and now on DVD? It's just that foresight that he had of thinking, you know, this is probably gonna be a good deal for us for years to come. Lou Wasserman represented Alfred Hitchcock. And one of the things that Lou Wasserman did for Alfred Hitchcock was to get him involved in television. And again, Wasserman saw that television was good for your movies, because if you became a brand name in television, people would go see your movies. Good evening. My name is Alfred Hitchcock, and the program is Alfred Hitchcock Presents. The next step that he wanted to do was to acquire a major studio, and that studio was Universal. He saw Universal as a way to move the business into both television and movies and all those things. When MCA purchased Universal Pictures in 1962, it really raised a red flag with the Justice Department because they're saying, hey, you know, you guys are running a television production company, you're representing actors, and now you own a film studio too. Robert Kennedy looked at this and said, this is really a monopoly, and you gotta kill this Universal deal. And Wasserman and Stein saw right away what the future was, and they said, okay, we're going out of the agency business right now. We're going into the movie business, so we're going to keep Universal. It was obviously a clear turning point from which he never looked back. I mean, he went from running uh, an agency to, in his mind, having an opportunity to run kind of a global business. 
again, Lou Wasserman's vision was really remarkable. When Carl Emley started Universal City, one of the first things he did was to start tours for people to come and watch movies being made. And so in 1964, ever looking for new ways to market aspects of Universal, Lou Osman brought the Universal tours back again. Do come to Universal Studios. You'll have the time of your life getting scared to death. And he took that original idea of Carl Emley to what is today, the Universal Studio Tours, the Universal Theme Park, all of those things which are enormous sources of income. But through most of the 60s, many people felt that Universal was neglecting its first and foremost business, which was the movie making business. Universal Studios was a disorganized, evolving motion picture company. And I think one of the things that uh, we can claim responsibility for is to bring some organization into that operation. I think one of the strokes of genius of Lou was hiring Sid and then supporting him. They worked great together. I, I think maybe in some way it may have been a father-son kind of relationship. And I think he respected Sid's judgment. Sid Scheinberg encountered Steven Spielberg, and Scheinberg saw something in Spielberg, gave him some work in television, and a project came by about a giant shark called Jaws. That movie was given to Steven Spielberg. The whole front's moving. By the time we're ready to shoot that way, it's gonna be all the way down there. Then when they were filming Jaws, Steven Spielberg was a young director doing a crazy thing on a big budget. Then Blue Wasserman was as steadfast and committed and supportive as you would ever want an executive to be. And obviously they were all greatly rewarded for that in, in terms of its success and it really changed the industry. They decide they're going to make this a huge splash and they open it at a thousand theaters on the same weekend. They flood all the networks with ads for this film. and they build up the clamor, and it succeeds. We begin getting the idea of the summer blockbuster. And that was Lou Wasserman's brainchild. It was the beginning of a whole new era because all these things that Lou Wasserman had envisioned a long time ago that now could come to fruition through Universal. So he probably, for 20 years, was the most singular, most powerful man in Hollywood. He was the one everybody turned to with their problems. He was one of the great problem solvers of his generation. His handshake meant more to people than an ironclad contract. If Lou Wasserman told you something was going to happen, you didn't need 50 million lawyers. You had his word. A lot of people have been successful in business, and unfortunately, not enough people are aware of the responsibilities we have. I don't think there are any more Lou Wassermans. I don't think there'll ever be a Lou Wasserman. I wish you were still here, and that's really all I can say.